be sure to follow me on Twitter. There you can keep up with all the updates from Comics Explained and talk to me directly. What's going on, Comic Nation? This is Rob, and as we get closer to the U.S. release of Avengers 2 Age of Ultron, I thought it might be a good idea to take some time away from Time Runs Out and explain the background of the Avengers from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, since this is something that we haven't really done yet. Now, what I'm hoping this will do is serve the purpose of explaining each of these characters to give you an idea of what's been going on behind the scenes of the films, ultimately leading up to the current events in Avengers Age of Ultron. So, Natasha Romanoff was born on November 22nd in 1984 in Stalingrad, Russia. Now, this information comes from her S.H.I.E.L.D. file, which also tells us that her parents are unknown, but they're presumed deceased. Now, the reason for her shrouded background seems largely to be tied to her earlier introduction into the Black Widow program. Now, the Black Widow program was actually hinted at by Natasha Romanoff during her encounter with Bruce Banner during the Avengers film, when she had mentioned that she had been trained at a very young age in terms of how to be an assassin. But the Black Widow program was actually expanded on a little bit further with regards to the Red Room program in the TV show Agent Carter when it was revealed that Dottie Underwood was actually part of the program that was a precursor to the Black Widow program. Again, this was the Red Room. This is basically where they took younger people and they taught them what they needed to know to become assassins for the Russian government. Now, what we don't know is exactly what kind of regimen Natasha Romanoff was made to endure as part of the Black Widow program, but what we do know is is that once she graduated from the program, or I guess you could call it a graduation of sorts, she had basically gone on to become one of the more one of the foremost assassins, I guess, in the world overall. Now, in the Avengers film, what we actually get is this explanation, I guess, in terms of the conversation between Black Widow and Hawkeye with regards to how it was that Black Widow and Hawkeye had first met. And what we learn is that somewhere along the line, after Black Widow had become an assassin for the Russian government, she was targeted by S.H.I.E.L.D. And that in response, S.H.I.E.L.D. had sent Hawkeye to assassinate Black Widow. But what had happened here is that ultimately Hawkeye chose not to kill her. He chose to basically keep, tra keep tabs on her to follow her to learn what she was about and ultimately discovered what her identity was. Now, what this seems to do is lead to this kind of friendship and possible romantic interest between the two of them. We're not really sure how deep that goes, but this really kind of began the introduction of her character into S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, we don't exactly know how it was that she had eventually joined S.H.I.E.L.D. We just simply know she was part of S.H.I.E.L.D. one day. But what we also learned is that in the Winter Soldier film, if you guys recall, she had been talking to Captain America about the Winter Soldier. And what she had told us is that when she was part of S.H.I.E.L.D., one of her first major assignments was to track, or I guess to track and to uh, basically keep safe an Iranian nuclear scientist. But the result was that the scientist had been shot by Bucky Barnes by shooting through her. And ultimately the scientist was killed. Now, this is basically, I guess, the events that led up into her becoming, I guess, a full S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. But the next thing that we found after this, I guess, after this particular action, was her introduction into the Marvel Cinematic Universe proper with Iron Man 2. Now, what's really interesting here is that the way that she came about introducing herself to Tony Stark was actually due to a combination of her being hired into Stark Industries as, uh, I guess, as Natalie Rushman, a, uh, I guess, an intern of sorts, but also due to some training or, I guess, some acting on her behalf. What had happened here is that when one of her co-workers, a woman by the name of Samantha Carlyle, had been assigned to deliver various documents to Pepper Potts and Tony Stark, Natalie Rushman had actually used some pills to knock Samantha unconscious. And when she did, she took the documents herself and delivered them to Tony Stark, ultimately resulting in her introduction in Iron Man 2 and Tony Stark picking her up, I guess, as a personal assistant of sorts between Tony Stark and Pepper Potts. Now, following the events of Iron Man 2, Black Widow was actually part of the events that unfolded in the Incredible Hulk film. Now, this was a comic book tie-in. What this told us is that her role was largely a backup role. That what had happened was she had been assigned by S.H.I.E.L.D. to, uh, I guess, to travel to Culver University and to keep tabs on Bruce Banner when it was discovered by S.H.I.E.L.D. that Bruce Banner had returned to the United States. But when the conflict broke out between Abomination and the Incredible Hulk, Black Widow had been assigned as part of the cleanup crew, so to speak, in the sense that her role was to make sure that there was no evidence 
of any kind that could be left over that individuals could use to try to copy the actions of Bruce Banner. Now, during this time, she had encountered Dr. Samuel Stearns, but of course she had uh, incapacitated him quite readily and then, of course, transitioned on to the, uh, to the next task. And so what we found was that right before the events of Avengers, that she had been tasked, I guess, to follow a Russian general named Georgi Lukov, I think his name was. And that, of course, as we saw at the beginning of the Avengers film, she had allowed herself to be captured. And the result, or I guess the goal here, was to basically learn everything she could about Georgi Lukov's actions and then turn him over to S.H.I.E.L.D., which, of course, she was successful in doing. Now, moving into the events leading up to the Winter Soldier, what we learn is that right after the Battle of New York happened, that is to say, the Avengers film, that when it ended, that Natasha Romanoff had been partnered with Steve Rogers. Now, the first mission the two of them had came in the form of an attempt to foil the plans of a man named Baker. Now, we're not really given anything other than the, the name Baker. We don't really know anything about him. But what we know is that Baker's goal was to detonate, or I guess to set off a weapon called the Zodiac. Now, the Zodiac was a chemical weapon that was also mentioned during Agent Carter during the one shot. And so what we know is that somewhere along the line, this Zodiac biological weapon had gone into the hands of the Strategic Science Reserve, which again was the precursor to S.H.I.E.L.D. And that somewhere along the line, S.H.I.E.L.D. had basically lost this object. Maybe it had been sold, maybe it had been misplaced. We're not really sure how this happened, but it had ended up in the hands of Baker. Now, what we found was that Black Widow, Captain America, and Brock Rumlow were ultimately uh, successful in being able to end Baker's campaign to set off this, uh, this biological weapon. And so the result was that Baker was taken into custody, which of course led us into Captain America the Winter Soldier, and ultimately the current events with Avengers Age of Ultron. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know. And let me know down in the comments section if you guys want me to continue this series or if you guys don't really want to see it anymore. So <laughs> with that being said, I will catch you guys later. Peace.